welcome to live teaching and learning session of principles of macroeconomics BECC 133. Today is the third session of this paper. Today we will discuss about measuring economic performance and aggregates of national income. As you know that national income is the sum total of all the final goods and services which are produced by the normal resident of our country in an accounting year. That is called national income. National income is very necessary to estimate for calculating our economic growth and economic performance because per capita income depends upon national income. Without calculating national income, we can't estimate per capita income. And without getting per capita income, we can't estimate economic welfare of the country. So national income is very important concept to understand how national income is estimated, how per capita income is estimated with the help of national income, and what are the aggregates of national income and how national income can measure the economic performance. And now in this unit, you will study about concept of balance of payment and balance of trade. These topics are very important in this unit. One is aggregates of national income and meaning of economic growth, types of circular flow of income. Next topic is measurement of economic performance and BOP and BOT. What is the basic difference between these two concepts? In this unit, I will discuss with you about all these topics. Next is what is economic growth? As you know that each and every economy, either it may be capitalist or it may be socialist or mixed economy, each and every country wants to achieve higher growth rate of economic development and economic growth. Economic growth is the growth of standard of living as measured by per person real GDP. I have discussed with you what is real GDP and what is potential GDP? Real GDP is called actual GDP. It means what amount of goods and services are produced in actually in our economy with the available resources that is called real GDP. Real GDP shows the actual position of the output in the country. But the potential GDP shows the capacity to produce. It means whatever the capacity, whatever the available resources in our country have capacity to produce, that will be shown by potential GDP. So these two concepts are different from each other. Potential GDP shows capacity to produce and real GDP shows actual output, actual production of the country. Both may be equal or may not be. Sometimes potential GDP is greater than real GDP and sometimes real GDP is greater than potential GDP. Economic growth is a continuous process in which national income and per capita income increases continuously for the long time period. Economic growth is very necessary to estimate because it explains our economic performance also. Without calculating economic growth, we can't estimate economic development. And without estimating economic development, we can't explain the economic performance. So economic growth is 
the growth of standard of living as measured by the per person real gdp our purpose in this chapter is to explain what determine growth of potential gdp gdp or economic growth will help us to understand why some nations or regions have experienced rapid economic growth and attained higher standard of living while others have stagnated at low level of real income economic growth concept is related with developed countries because it explain only the increase in real gdp and per capita income it does not explain how economic growth affects economic development and affects our other factors or economic welfare of the society people so economic growth is a narrow concept but economic development is a broader concept economic growth is related with developed nations but economic development concept is related with developing nations like india economic growth has only two components one is increase in real national income and other is increase in per capita income but economic development has three components or three indicators one is increase in real national income second is increase in per capita income and third is increase in social welfare when our economy people are highly educated mortality rate is declining infant mortality rate also declining and standard of living of the country people is increasing it means we can say that our economy is going to develop and our economy is giving welfare of the country people so economic development is a broader concept and each and every economy wants to achieve higher growth rate of economic development and economic growth so economic growth is very necessary to estimate for estimating economic development and to explain how economic performance can be achieved and how economy can perform in a very good way or in a better way next is types of circular flow of income this topic is very important in this unit because in exams circular flow of income can be explained by different ways and in examination point of view this topic is very important sometimes question may be asked that how circular flow can be defined in a real sense or in a money sense and how you can explain the circular flow of income in a two sector economy in a three sector economy and in a four sector economy what type of circular flow can be drawn in different types of economy so here types of circular flow of income is basically of two types one is real flow and second is money flow real flow exists only in a closed economy closed economy refers to that economy which has no relationship with rest of the world and closed economy is that economy in which money does not play any important role all the transactions are done by barter system or change and exchange with goods and services and in this real flow we assume that government does not play any important role and if government don't interfere in economic activity then this flow may be exist so real flow is at present 
unrealistic. At present, real flow does not exist, but it is a first type of circular flow of income. And at present, each and every commodity can be sold or purchased with the help of money. So at present, money flow is going on each and every transactions held with money and money can sell or purchase anything. Money is a medium of exchange and at present all the economies are open economies who have relationship with rest of the world. So these are the two types of circular flow of income. One is real flow and other is money flow. Now we will explain in detail with these models in two sector model in three sector model and in a four sector economy now this is the first circular flow uh, income model that is two factor circular flow model it can be say that this is the circular flow of income in a two sector economy what is two sector economy first of all you have to understand according to this model we will take only two sectors one is household sector and other is business sector or firm sector in economy in reality there are four sectors one is household sector second is firm sector third is government sector and fourth is rest of the world sector but in a two sector economy we take only two sectors which is household and second is firm sector. As we know that household sector is the owner of all the factors of production. Factors of production are four, land, labor, capital, entrepreneur. Household sector provides all the factors of production which is known as means of production household provided provide these factors of production to the firm sector and firm sector produces goods and services with the help of these factors of production and sell it to household sector and in again at present all the transactions are done by money so household will get reward by rendering their factor services household sector will take rent interest wages and profit from the firm sector and household will spend this money income which is received as a factor income by firm sector household will spend this income on the purchasing of goods and services so expenditures goes to household to firm sector and the income in form of rent interest wages and profit may income goes to household sector from firm sector this is the two sector model of the circular flow of income now next model is three sector model this three sector model in this sector we assume here three sectors are exist one is household sector second is government sector and third is firm sector household sector provide factors of production to the government sector and to the firm sector Government and firms are main producing sectors. Some goods are produced by government and firms generally produce all the goods and services which is required by our country. So government sector and firm sector are considered as producing sector. At present, government play very important role in our economy and in all the world 
no one economy is without interference of the government classical economics assume that government does not play any important role but j m keynes john maynard keynes gave importance to the role of government he said that government is very necessary for the smoothly smoothly running of all the economic activities like production consumption and investment so that present that's why at present all the economies have government and government playing very important role first of all household will provide all the factors of production to the farm sector and government sector and farms produces goods and services and give it to household sector and household sector will purchase goods and services from the firm sector and firm will give factors reward in form of wages rent interest and profit to the household sector as you know that government mainly function is government mainly do social welfare of the country and government protect our country from warfare so government need revenues and from where government collect revenues government collect revenues through two sources one is taxable sources and second is non taxable sources government collect their revenues from household sector and firm sector by imposing direct taxes and indirect taxes government collect income from taxes if government collect income from direct taxes direct taxes who will pay household will pay household will pay always direct taxes to the government sector and firm will pay always indirect taxes like gst or goods and services tax which was earlier sales tax known as vat value added tax but at present this tax is known as gst goods and services tax this goods and services tax are paid by firm sector to the government sector so with the help of these direct taxes and indirect taxes government collect revenues and government provide transfer payments to the household sector and government give subsidies to the firm sector transfer payments are those payments which are called unilateral payments which are called one sided payments government provide transfer payments to the household sector like old age pension and scholarship gifts donation and other type of unilateral payment which is related with only one sided payments and government provides subsidies to the firm sector subsidies are generally called negative tax sometimes government want to decrease the price level of the product and if firm said that he has a large cost of producing that production and if government is saying to reduce the price of the product how firm will reduce the price and in that case government will provide subsidies to the firm sector for the reduction of price of that particular commodity so government provide subsidies to the firm sector and government provide transfer payments or social transfers to the household sector here is a difference between old age pension and retirement pension retirement pension is known as double sided income or it is based on double entry system the person who provided their services to the government sector 
from the last 20 years or from the last 30 years, then the person will get retirement pension. But old age pension will get only by those old age persons who have not provided any services to the government sector, but getting one-sided payment from the government sector. That type of income is called transfer payments. These transfer payments only received by household sector and it is not included in the estimation of national income because national income is based on double entry system. Those transactions who have double entry system, who have two sides, one is debit and other is credit, these types of transactions are always included in the estimation of national income. But transfer payments can't include it in the estimation of national income because if we include, national income will not accurately calculate. So this is the three sector model of the circular flow of income in which three sectors like household, government and firm sector exist in the economy. First of all, household provide factors of production to the firm sector and to the government sector and government uh, impose taxes on household sector in form of direct taxes, government collect revenue and in form of indirect taxes, government collect revenue from the firm sector and the firm produces goods and services and give it to household sector and at present government provides subsidies to the firm sector and government provide transfer payments to the household sector. So this is called three sector model. Now next model is four sector model. Circular flow of income in a four sector economy. Four sector in this model we include household sector, government sector, firm sector or business sector both are same and next fourth sector is foreign sector or rest of the world sector. In this four sector model household provide factors of production to the firm sector and firm sector will give it to the rewards by rendering their services of the all factors of production in form of rent, wages, interest and profit, business sector or firm sector will give it to these factor income to the household sector. Household sector will spend money on the purchasing of goods and services which are produced by the firm sector. And business sector provide supply of goods and services to the household sector. Now next is government sector. As you know that government impose taxes on household sector and firm sector. Direct taxes taken by government from the household sector. Direct taxes are those taxes which are imposed by the government on household sector. In this case, incidence of tax and impact of tax falls on same person. Direct taxes are those taxes which first burden and last burden bear by the same person. But indirect taxes are those taxes which first burden falls on producer and the final burden falls on consumer. If the first burden and last burden falls on different people, that is called indirect taxes. And when the burden of tax first or last falls or bear by the same person, that is called direct taxes. The examples of direct taxes are like income tax, gift tax and house tax or property tax etc. And the examples of indirect taxes are like GST, excise duties etc. Direct taxes are paid by household sector 
and indirect taxes are paid by firm sector to the government sector government spend expenditure spend money on household factors of production because household is the owner of all the factors of production so government spend money by rendering the services of all the factors of production by household sector and government give it to payment and government provide subsidies to the farm sector and government spend money on the development of the business enterprises this is called three sector model and if we include foreign sector in this model it will be called four sector economy foreign sector is also known as rest of the world sector as we know that at present all the economies are open economies who have relationship with rest of the world each and every country is engaged in international trade international trade is that trade which is done by all the economies with other nations for getting profits or international gains or advantages from international trade in international trade we include exports and imports of the products if we import goods and services from the rest of the world sector that payment goes to rest of the world sector for import and if we export goods and services to the rest of the world sector then we will get export receipts or exports payment and it will goes to firm sector so rest of the world play very important role rest of the world gets import payment and rest of the world provide export payments or exports income to the firm sector this is called four sector circular flow of income that is very important you have to understand about what is three sector model what is two sector model and what is four sector model so circular flow of income is basically of two types one is real flow and second is money flow real flow does not exist at present but money flow at present is exist and under money flow we take four sector of economy model three sector of economy model and two sector of economy model but the real model is four sector model which at present exists in our economy next is aggregates of national income now what are the aggregates of national income as you have studied about aggregates of national income in last session like gdp gross domestic product gnp gross national product gdp at market price gdp at factor cost gnp at market price gnp at factor cost four aggregates are on market price like gdp gnp ndp nnp these four aggregates are on market price and same as gdp gross domestic product gnp gross national product ndp net domestic product nnp net national product these four aggregates are on factor cost these all are called aggregates of national income gdp shows the gross domestic product or the goods and services or the sum total of all the goods and services which are produced in our domestic territory in an accounting year is called gdp and if we add net factor income from abroad in the concept of gdp then we can get gnp gross national product and with the help of this gross national product 
we can estimate net national product by deducting or subtracting depreciation. Depreciation is called wear and tear loss or maintenance expenditure or obsolescence cost or replacement cost. And it is also known as consumption of fixed capital. There is a basic difference between gross concept and net concept is the difference is the depreciation. In gross concept, depreciation value is included. But in net concept, depreciation is excluded. If we deduct depreciation from gross domestic product, then we can get net domestic product. And the basic difference between domestic concept and national concept is net factor income from abroad. Net factor income from abroad is the difference between income received from abroad and income paid to the abroad. NFIA, it is known as NFIA, is it's a short form of net factor income from abroad and it is very necessary to convert domestic income into foreign income or national income. And the third basic important concept is the basic difference between market price and factor cost is NIT, which is called net indirect tax. Net indirect tax can be estimated by deducting income tax uh, subsidies from income tax. Or IT minus S is known as NIT, net indirect tax. NIT can be calculated with the help of IT minus S. What is IT? IT is indirect tax. And S is subsidies which are called negative tax provided by the government. So if we want to convert market price into factor cost, then we will deduct NIT or net indirect tax from market price. We can get factor cost. And if we add net NIT or net indirect tax in the concept of factor cost, then we can get market price. So these three things are very important. One is depreciation. Depreciation can convert gross concept into net concept. Second is NFIA, net factor income from abroad, which is the difference between income received from abroad and income paid to the abroad. If we add NFIA in domestic concept, then we can get national concept. And if we subtract NFIA from national concept, then we can get domestic concept. So domestic can be converted into national and national can be converted into domestic only with the help of net factor income from abroad. And the third concept is NIT, net indirect tax, which is very important if we want to convert market price into factor cost, then we must have to deduct NIT from market price, MP minus NIT is equals to factor cost and factor cost plus NIT is equals to market price. These are the aggregates of national income, but some other aggregates are also included in national income. And these aggregates are known as private income, next is personal income, and next is personal disposable income. Private income, there is a basic difference between private income, personal income, and personal disposable income. Private income can be calculated with the help of national income. National income is also known as NNP at FC. Here N means national. Second N means national. P means product. Net national product at factor cost is equivalent to national income. 
if we want to calculate private income first of all we will take national income or nnp fc and then we add all types of transfer payments either it may be current transfer or it may be capital transfers all transfer payments are included in private income because private income is one person income or individual person income so we can add all transfer payments all unilateral payments which are received by that person so all transfer payments are included in the estimation of private income next is interest on public debt is also included in this estimation of private income and uh, we exclude social security and profit and surpluses of the public undertakings because national income is the summation of private sector income and public sector income because our economy is mixed economy and mixed economy is that economy in which private sectors and public sectors both are coexist in it while calculating private income we take only private sector income not government sector income so in national income we take both sector income but if we deduct government sector income from the national income and add those incomes which is received by only private individual person then we can get private income so national income in this case we include all transfer payments in this income to estimate private income interest on national debt is also included but government sector income or public undertaking surpluses profits and other social security etc which is provided by the government are excluded from the national income then we can estimate private income with the help of this private income we can estimate personal income personal income is based on private income if we deduct two items from the private income then we can get personal income now what are these two things which are deducted from the private income then we can get personal income these two things are one is undistributed profit undistributed profits are called retained earning undistributed profits are those profits which are not distributed by the company or by the firm and which is retained for the firm for future growth and development of the business enterprises the per, the income or profit which is not distributed not received by the person that's why this is deducted from private income and next is corporate tax corporate tax is also known as profit taxes profit taxes are those taxes which are imposed by the government on the profits of the corporate sectors and these corporate taxes are not received by the person that's why this also exclude from the private income then we can estimate personal income so personal income can be estimated by deducting private deducting undistributed corporate profits and profit taxes from the private income then we can get personal income now the third concept which is also related with personal income that is called personal disposable income personal disposable income is that income which is received by the person after paying the direct taxes personal disposable income can be calculated with the help of national income or personal income if we take personal income for the calculation of personal disposable income then only one thing we have to deduct which is direct taxes 
on persons. And if we take national income for the estimation of personal disposable income, then we will deduct business savings, indirect taxes, and add subsidies, and deduct direct taxes on persons, and direct taxes on businesses, and social securities payment, and transfer payments we will add, and net factor income from abroad we add. If we think, take all these things, then we can estimate personal disposable income. If it is national income, then we no, don't need to include NFIA again because national income in this concept, NFIA is already included in it. If we are taking domestic income, then we must have to include NFIA to convert it into national income. So it's a very simple formula is personal disposable income is equals to personal income minus direct taxes. And it can be estimated with the help of national income or domestic income. But first of all, if national income is given, we must have to convert national income into private income and private income into personal income and personal income into personal disposable income. So these are three other aggregates of national income. Now next is, what is the difference between personal income and national income? There is a basic difference between personal income and national income is, personal income is a concept which is related with receipt of income by the person or individual. But the national income is a concept which is related to generation of income. Personal income is that income which can be received by the person and it can be calculated by deducting two things which is undistributed profit and corporate tax from the private income. Then we can get personal income. And national income is a concept in which all sectors income like private sector income and public sector income both are included in it. But in personal income, we include only that income which is received by the person or private sector, not by the government. So the second point is income from domestic product accruing to government constitutes a part of national income, but not of personal income. And income from domestic product accruing to government sector not does not constitute a part of national income income. So it's a national income. We include all sectors income like private sector income, public sector income because our country is mixed economy. So we include all the sectors income, public and private both. But in personal income, we include only private sector income but not include government sector income. Personal income can be estimated with the help of national income and national income is calculated on NNP FC, net national product at factor cost and which is based on GDP at MP or GNP at MP. Any aggregate if given, we can estimate national income. All things are interrelated with each other. Next is, next concept is balance of payment and balance of trade. This concept is very important because at present all the economies are open economies and all have relationship with the rest of the world. All are engaged in doing exports and imports of all goods and services with the rest of the world. That's why this balance of payment and balance of trade concept is very important to understand. Balance of trade is that concept which records 
only merchandise goods or merchandise transactions. For example, if we are doing exports and imports of only goods, not services, that will be called BOT, balance of trade. And in balance of payment, it's a broader concept. We include all types of transactions like goods and services which are engaged in international trade. Balance of trade includes only goods and balance of payment includes both goods and services. Second thing is balance of trade does not record the transactions of capital nature but balance of payment records the transactions of capital nature. Balance of trade is a part of current account of balance of payment. But balance of payment includes balance of trade, balance of services, balance of unilateral transfers, which is called one-sided transfers, and balance of capital transactions. In this point of view, we can say that balance of trade is a narrow concept and balance of payment is a broader concept. Balance of trade may be favorable or may not be, but balance of payment remains always favorable in an accounting sense because balance of payment is based on double entry system. As we know that each transaction has two sides, one is debit and other is credit. In this way, balance of payment remains always in balance as receipts are equals to payments or debit and credit sides are equal, then it will be remains always in balance in an accounting sense only, not in practical sense. Next is balance of payment or balance of trade. Defects of balance of trade can't be met by balance of payment. But if any deficiency exist in balance of payment, it can be sought out with the help of balance of trade. Balance of trade is a narrow concept. That's why it is not the true indicator of economic relations or economic prosperity of the country. But balance of payment is a true indicator of economic performance of the economy. Balance of payment is very necessary for each and every economy because it includes both the transactions of the goods and services. Goods are called merchandise items or visible items and services are known as invisible items or intangible items. Intangible items are those items which can't be seen or not in a physical mode like services, like communication, transportation, banking, insurance, shipping corporation, etc. Balance of trade is favorable when exports are greater than imports. And balance of trade is called unfavorable when imports are greater than exports. And if both are equal, exports and imports both are equal, then it will be called balanced of trade is in equilibrium position. Next is balance of payment has two accounts. One is current account and second is capital account. But balance of trade has no accounts. Balance of payment has two accounts. One is current and one other is capital. Now what item is included in current account? 
and what items are included in capital account this is the list of the items of current account and capital account current account takes three items one is visible items visible items are those items which can be seen which can be touchable which are called tangible that is trade in goods if we are doing trade in the goods and services if we are taking goods that is called visible item if we are taking services that will be called invisible items or intangible items but balance of payment takes all the transactions like goods and services in international trade so current account includes three items one is trade in goods next is trade in services services are like shipping banking transportation communication etc and third is unilateral transfers unilateral transfers are those transfers which are called one sided payments or one sided transactions these one sided transactions include gift remittances grants donation scholarship old age pension and all other items which are related with one sided payment only that item is included in current account so current account has three components one is visible items second is invisible items and third is unilateral payments or unilateral transfers next is capital account in this capital account we include all capital transactions which are related with short term or long term capital transactions may be short term capital transactions or it may be long term capital transactions capital account included one is foreign investment foreign investment is called fdi foreign direct investment in this we also include fii this is foreign institutional investment next is euro uh, equities etc all other external assistance are also included in capital account next is commercial borrowings commercial borrowings are also included in capital account these borrowings are related with commercial banking borrowings our economy can borrow money from commercial banks and from other foreign sector banks next is imf international monetary fund if any transactions which is related with money and which is made by imf that is called capital account component next is nr deposit nri deposits means non resident indian deposits are also included in capital account next is rupee debt services it also included in the estimation of capital account it means capital account always include all those transactions which are based on capital and which are related with money so capital account include all capital transactions for example foreign investment external assistance commercial borrowing imf nri deposits and rupee debt services so these are the two components of balance of payment balance of payment has two components two accounts one is current account other is capital account and if both account shows the balance in all these transactions then balance of payment will be called favorable or in balance balance of payment remains always in balance only in an accounting sense because it is based on double entry system because all transactions has two sides one is debit other is credit so balance of payment remains always in balance but in practical sense and in actual sense it may be favorable or may not be 
because it is a very broader concept. If our exports are greater than imports of all the goods and services, then it will be called favorable. And if imports are greater than imports, exports, then it will be called unfavorable. In India, balance of payment remains always unfavorable due to heavy imports bill and less exports. Next is, what causes a current account deficit? What are the reasons why, while calculating current account, it can be in surplus or it can be in deficit? Current account deficit, the main causes are like high consumption. If we are doing more imports from the rest of the world, and if our economy population is very high, and population requirement is too much higher, then we will consume more. And for satisfying the needs of the country people, if we import more goods and services from the rest of the world, in this case, our current account will be called deficient. If in our economy, saving rate is low, investment is low, competitiveness problem also creates deficiency problem in current account. And if there is unfair trade practices like WTO always bias with developing nations and always favor to most favored nations or developed nations, and if any natural disaster or crisis occur in the economy, then current account will become deficient. And we can compensate this current account deficient with the help of capital account surpluses. And if any deficiency in capital account exist then we can compensate it current account surpluses it means current account and capital account both are existing balance of payment and if any deficiency or deficit occur in current account it can be compensated with capital account balances and if any def deficit occur in capital account it can be compensated with current account surpluses but these are the main causes of current account deficit it is called cad cad next is private and public saving what is private and public saving private saving is that saving which is uh, saved by money by the household sector if we deduct taxes payment or consumption expenditure from our money income then we can get private saving. And public saving is the amount of tax revenue that the government is left with after paying for its spending. Government receive taxes from the household sector and firm sector and government spend money on goods and services. If taxes are greater than uh, government expenditure, then budget will, will be in surplus. And if taxes are less than government expenditure, it will be called deficit, budget deficit. National saving is the submission of private saving and public saving. National saving includes both type of savings. So national saving can be calculated by help of private saving plus public saving. How private saving can be estimated? S is equals to Y, Y is income, C is consumption, G is government expenditure. Next is Y minus C minus G minus T is tax and plus T is transfer payments. So we can write in this form also S is equals to Y minus T minus C plus T minus G. Here T minus G is transfer payments minus government expenditures and income minus tax minus consumption we can get private saving and T minus G we can get public saving. And if we add private saving and public saving both, then we can get national saving. Now, what precautions should be taken by the by us for while estimating national income? We don't include second-hand goods while estimating national income. We always include final goods and services in the estimation of national income to avoid double counting problem. And we include imputed value of the owner, imputed value of the rent. Uh, in estimation of national income, gambling, smuggling, and other illegal activities not included in the estimation of national income. Domestic services are not included in the estimation of national income. 
and production of services are also not included production of services by paid employees it will be included in the estimation of national income and if we want to calculate ndp at fc and national income then we can take gnp mp if we deduct gnp mp minus depreciation and minus nfia and minus nit then we can estimate ndp at fc and ndp at fc may if we add net factor income from abroad then we can estimate national income so this is the topic of today's class is national income aggregates and economic performance thank you